As we gather together today, let us share our good mornings. Becca, do you want to do that this morning? Let me rephrase that. Becca, could you do that this morning? <laughs> sure, why don't I uh, lead our good mornings? Good morning. 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 Good Jambo. Jambo. Nadama. Nadama. Olage. Olage. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Bonjour. Zao Shantao. Zao Shantao. Kajana Ai. Kajana Ai. Tere Abati. Tere Abati. Welcome, friends, to worship. I don't know if the sound system's on. I don't think it is. Oh, 
Okay. So you just keep doing those announcements. We're going to do it all over again. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just, just <laughs> Welcome, friends, to morning. No? Okay. Morning worship at Lake Avenue Baptist yes. Church. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to see all of you. Um, What is happening in the life of our church? <laughs> I don't know, Michael, but fortunately, it's all here in the bulletin. <laughs> I encourage you to read through all of the events occurring in the life of our church. One thing I can, I do uh, want to highlight for you is our aging gracefully and joyfully group. Amen. Susan, oh, a fan, a fan. Susan, do you want to give a plug, or should I just keep... I, this is the most raucous fellowship group at LABC. All right, all right. I, I cannot get any work accomplished in my office when this group is meeting your church. There's so much chaos and mayhem and melee. Susan, why is there so much melee in the aging gracefully and joyfully group meetings? What are you doing in these meetings? Aging joyfully. Clearly. Into that. Clearly. I really encourage anyone you know who, especially if that's a, if it's a point in your life around which you've been having some mixed feelings, if, it's, if transitions are hard for you, especially, I really encourage you to check out, come and you know, talk to Susan and, and think about joining some of those meetings. Because clearly they're having a lot of fun. No doubt. Um, and it makes me feel bad that I'm only 44. But anyway, um, Lee. I have an introduction to make. Our new soprano choral scholar is here with us this morning. Uh, she's a second year master's student at Eastwood School. Her name is Zhaoga Zhang. Welcome. <laughs> Um, you can see there's a community dinner set for Wednesday the 27th at 6 p.m. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Well, okay, so we have, let's go. Laura and everybody gets to use their teacher voice because I just discovered one of our amplifiers is now shot. So go for it, teacher voice. <laughs> okay, um, so I am back on the job. All right. Yay. 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 Not as your moderator. <laughs> but as a member of the resource and support team, checking that COVID data. <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> um, I want to just share with you that hospitalizations are beginning to rise. A new variant is on its way. I'm watching everything. And I want to, at this point, encourage everyone to get vaccinated, okay? Three vaccinations for those of us over 60. Flu, the new COVID one, and that depends on the timing when you had your last one. So if you're not sure on that, you can check with the pharmacy folks or your doctor about when you get the next one. For those of us who are about due for that, I would wait until after the middle of the month to get the newest one. And finally, RSV. RSV is uh, a virus that affects very little children and those of us who are aging gracefully. Aging gracefully yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that that one is for those of us who are 60 and over. <clears throat> And for the children, I think you need to check with your pediatrician around that, uh, clearly. Um, but the reason for those of us who are older to get it is not only to protect us, but every time we can break a chain of transmission, we protect our little ones, okay? So if we're not transmitting it to, say, grandchildren or a friend who has grandchildren and that doesn't transmit back into school and back down to the really little ones who are at serious risk from RSV. Um, my 
the daughter had a very good friend whose little one was in hospital last uh, February mm -hmm. with RS. Uh, very scary stuff. So, not only protecting ourselves, but breaking those transmission chains as much as we can to protect our little ones. So, and if anybody has questions about any of those um, vaccinations and what's involved, I'm happy to talk to any of you about it who would like to. And I encourage you to talk to your doctors about it too. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie. Uh, yes, um, I bring greetings from my friend uh, Jean. She said, told me this week she's gone back to being Episcopalian. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that her church is now back on their regular schedule. So she uh, doesn't have to get up as early as she would have before. But she said, the people in your church are so friendly. Well, that's a good thing. Yes. Well, are we yes, we yes. Yes. Oh yeah, one, one more and then I have two quick announcements and then we are going to have a worship, don't worry. <laughs> You'll notice that attached to the back of the bulletin is a flyer for the Christian Faith and LGBTQ plus experience lecture. Every fall semester and every spring semester at CRCDS, there is a week where we don't have classes but instead attend these big group lectures. And on Tuesday, the lecture is devoted to issues surrounding uh, the experience of people of faith who are also queer. And so you may notice, if you look closely, uh, you know the moderator, I think. This is an old friend of Lake Avenue Baptist Church. But also, it's hard to see, but Jennifer Harris Dalt is a good friend of Peter and Heather. And uh, Peter and Jennifer and Alan have been with us a few times, and their kids, Simeon and Madeline, have been with us. So Jennifer's going to be on the panel too, and that's really exciting. So if you're interested in attending, I'm certainly going to be there, and Michael will be there. I'll be there at all the lectures all week, every uh, every day at 5:30. There's a different lecture, um, and maybe you know we can go out for dinner afterwards or something like that. But I really encourage you to, um, Lake Avenue as an institution supports this, and I encourage you to support with your feet as well. Thank you. In true LABC fashion, after the service today with our coffee time, we are also going to have cake. And you might say, Pastor Michael, why will we have cake? And the reality is we don't need an excuse. but. We do have an explanation, because today is Karen Brokaw's birthday. Yay! Yes, now we're not singing yet. Okay. We only sing if over 80. Uh, but uh, Garth and family have arranged to have a cake. And yeah, I know, I know, at Lake Ave, go, go figure. Um, and so please join us for that. I invite you to join with me now in our responsive call to worship this morning. Sing a new song to God. Sing of light and hope. Dance with laughter and joy. Dance, Dance with hearts full of love. Rejoice with strings and drums. Rejoice with justice and peace. Sing a new song to God. Let us pray. God of love, we enter your presence today. And we remember and we rejoice. We come looking for your faithfulness and your loving care. May we be a people who seek reconciliation and genuine forgiveness for one another. In remembrance and in gratitude for your mercy, your grace, and your love, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, and the words are printed in your order of service in English, Burmese, and in French. Let's sing together.
Becca? Friends, our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. You can follow along in our bulletin as I read. Hear the word of the Lord. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done from them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am I with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this passage, Jesus is talking about how to get along and how to be a church. I want you to imagine that this bowl right here represents the church community. This item represents all of us together. If I accidentally or intentionally, because I'm angry, drop this on the floor and it breaks into a million pieces, what do you do? Right? Because it's made of a material that it, it, it'll break into pieces. It's not plastic. Right? This is ceramic. And one of the things that Jesus is trying to show us is that when things break, we shouldn't just throw them in, throw the broken pieces away. Right? I love this Japanese art form called Kintsugi. And the concept behind this is that if you break a bowl or a vase or a cup, instead of taking the pieces and throwing them away, you put them back together. But you don't just put them back together and try to hide the part, the, the fracture lines. No. You use either gold dust or silver dust to highlight and accentuate the parts where they come together again. So it's not just like, for example, if I was trying to glue something, I would try to get it to, you know, how, how close can I get those pieces together so that you can't even see the break? No, no, no. They're actually <laughs> highlighting, accentuating, featuring the fracture line. Because the logic is that, number one, there is a beauty in broken things. Things break. It's a part of life. It happens. What is beautiful is the way that things come together again. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't grieve when things are broken. Or maybe we should grieve a little bit, but we should work hard to put them together again in a beautiful way. And so this pottery always ha looks different because when it breaks into pieces, there's no logic to it, there's no pattern to it, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll always see that there are interesting lines and there's usually gold or silver threads that run through it. And I, I think this is such an interesting idea. We don't throw things away. We don't throw people away. We don't throw relationships away. If things go bad, you work to get it together again, right? Especially in the church. It is very easy in our lives to just shut the door on people 
and just say, you know what, uh, you're too much, I can't deal, bye. It is very easy to do that. And it is very easy to say, you know what, you made me mad, I'm done with you. Throw it away. But I think that this is showing us that there is beauty in putting things back together. Not only putting things back together, but recognizing, yeah, this was broken, but we made it work. We put it back together, it's better now, and you can see where we had this difficulty, you can see where we had this conflict, but look, we made it work together, right? So, you know, this passage for me is about Jesus trying to encourage us all to work as a team, because Jesus knows how people are, and Jesus understood, and he had these, he had these 12 dudes who were with him all the time. And the Bible doesn't talk a lot about the fighting, but I guarantee you there was a lot of drama in that group. And I'm sometimes disappointed that the Bible doesn't include all the drama that was in that group, because I think it would have helped us all to see how we should interact with one another. But I think this is, I think Jesus here is uh, <clears throat> maybe talking about some of his disciples. Maybe he's like, like quietly suggesting to a few of them how they should be resolving some of their conflicts without calling them by name, you know? But I want you to remember this. You know, this is us. You can say it's our church family, it's LABC, it's our own families, it's our neighborhoods. If this falls and breaks, which is probably going to happen at some point, right? We're not going to just pick up the pieces and put them in the trash. We're going to put them back together again. And we're going to highlight the scenes where they have been joined again, right? Because that's beautiful. Coming together again and working together to solve conflict and resolve differences is a beautiful thing. It's a sacred thing we should all appreciate. Should I drop it on the floor now? <laughs> we don't want to make a mess and be dangerous. But I want you to remember that it's called Kitsugi. I'm going to put this on Instagram after church because I love this stuff. Okay, Michael, I'm done now. No, I'm okay. just going to write down. I just want to write down the dudes and the drama. That's a great sermon title. Dude, you the, know, you know. The dudes and the drama. Oh, I know. You know there's got to be. Anybody with 12 friends? Yeah. She, absolutely. And they were together all the time. There's okay. no way. Yeah. Oh, that would, that would have been fun. <laughs> Thank you, Becca. Let's sing together. Love divine, all loves excelling. The words are printed in your order of service.
Sunday school next week, but this is our transitional week, getting kids used to some of the adjustments. What's that? And the nursery is open too, if anybody wants that opportunity. We are looking this year at making some significant changes to our Sunday school program, how we do that. Uh, as I mentioned in previous weeks, sometimes we have 15 kids, the next week we have another 15, but they're different than the first 15. And so we're constantly adjusting, trying to make sure that we meet the needs of our young people. So keep your eyes and ears open for a little bit more information about that. We are excited to continue to minister with our children. Grace is just too cute. <laughs> in any case, it is a gift. Having our children in our community is a gift. Each and every one of us is a gift because we bring something to the ministry to which we share. So we'll receive our offering this morning. And if you're visiting with us, your presence this morning is your offering this day.
God, we thank you for the gifts you've given to us. We thank you for this place, this community in which we worship, with all of our strengths and all of our weaknesses, for bringing us together to serve you and to serve our community. So bless these gifts as we seek to use them to your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. Take them loud. Okay. Susan is still recovering from a little bit of a cold, and her voice is not as strong as perhaps Your sometimes voice. as mine is. That's a nice way of saying I'm loud. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. Do we have uh, prayers of celebration or concern to share today? I've already mentioned Ken. Please hold him in your prayers. Um, and others, what do we have? Celebration. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> um, our daughter Stephanie fell uh, and broke three toes in her oh. foot, and we had a scare about possible blood clots in her legs, but that's not true, and we're glad she's recovering, but she's pretty frustrated being laid up. <laughs> oh, God bless her. Okay, so we pray for Stephanie. Thank you. I wanted to just celebrate the fact that we have a full choir again. Yes. Yes. But we need to make a very quick decision. Chancel choir or what? What are we going to call you consistently? Chancel choir. We'll continue with that one. All right. I'll make sure that that's reflected. Thank you. Ragtime band. Okay, so chancel. What was it? Ragtime band. Ragtime band. Okay. We're not going to open that conversation up any further. All right. Other prayer celebrations or concerns. Yes. Uh, my brother Ricky goes in uh, to find how they're going to address his latest bout with cancer. Prostate mm. cancer. Um, he had it before and been here for eight years and it's back again. So uh, we're going to be resting on the 12th. Okay, so we'll pray for your brother Ricky who's having uh, cancer addressed on the 12th. We're going to try to make some decisions. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Katong. Um, my sister in law has a breast cancer and she went on the surgery. <laughs> okay, so we're going to pray for Katam's sister, sister-in-law, sister who is having uh, cancer surgery this month. Okay, thank you. Tom. How are you feeling? I'm actually feeling quite a bit better today, so thank you. It's uh, Every time everybody goes, oh, it's cool, and then it's warm, and then it's cool, and it's warm, pray for me, because that's not fun. So thank you for asking. Uh, we also pray for all of our young people who are starting back at school. Um, they are all now back, so the parents give thanks to God <laughs> that they're not home right now, and we continue to pray for them. Uh, and I ask you also to pray for uh, my son, who is starting his second year of in uh, biomedical engineering, and uh, so he will eventually resurface at some point after the next semester. <laughs> Good 
Let's gather all of our prayers together and turn to God in prayer. Dear God, you hear our concerns, you hear our joys, we're glad that kids are back in school and college people are starting again. We're thankful for their teachers and for the teaching that they are giving the children and the learning. We're thankful for that. We are concerned about Morocco, who recently had a terrible earthquake, killing many people. And we still are concerned about Mao with the wild fires that were there. Your earth is beautiful, Lord, but in spots, it's very dangerous. Help us to remember those who are suffering from homelessness, loss of family, loss of livelihood. We keep working to prevent some of these things and to enjoy your earth. We thank you for music. Some of us were at a concert last night to hear Renee Fleming, who is a Rochester star. We thank you for her voice and her presence. And we thank you that we have music all summer, but now we have our choir. This is a, helps us so much to worship you. Today, we are starting a new year, and we're happy for the children, for the adults, for our community, this bowl of community that we are. If there are breaks among us, let's put them together. If anybody is feeling left out, let's welcome them in. We are so happy to be in your house with your people. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Susan. And it's great that you're back with us on the mend and feeling better. Second of our readings today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be is summed up by the one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. May God add blessing to the reading from the book of Romans. Let us pray. God of love, as we seek to understand what it is that you have to say to us today, may the words of my mouth, meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. In your name we pray. Amen. Anybody who is of my generation who grew up in the West may be familiar with this, and I know they existed a little bit before, too. Do you remember Choose Your Own Adventure books? Does anybody remember those? Okay. They were books that were written in a way where you would read to a certain point, and then it would say, turn to either page this or page that. And you would go to that page, and whichever one you chose gave a slightly different story. And so you could read one full story, then go back and then read again. And all of them mixed, and there's some sort of a, a permutation and combination math thing where you could get a whole bunch of different stories out of one book. 
So today we're going to play a choose your own adventure. <laughs> you have to decide, as a congregation, do you want me to speak about the 16 or 613 commandments or the one commandment? The one? Okay, I know where Tom's going to go. He's going to say one. The one? Okay. All right, that good, good answer because that's the sermon I prepared. <laughs> and it's actually probably a good decision to go with the one because if we went with the 613, you might be late for work on Monday or frankly all week because we could go on and on and on. Now the 600, or 613 I'm talking about are those 613 Jewish commandments, the mitzvah in Hebrew, that were taken out of the Old Testament. And those were the commandments that guided the Jewish people in their relationship with God and with one another. And they were really helpful for them to learn how to live with one another in relationship, how to make the relationship they had with one another all the stronger. And each of those commands had a particular scripture. Just to give you an idea of the, the kind of thing you chose for me not to speak about, and you'll get an idea probably why that was a good decision. For instance, number 13 of those 613, to love your neighbor as yourself, comes from the book of Leviticus. Number 14, to love converts, new people exploring Judaism, comes from Deuteronomy. Number 15, to not hate your brother in your heart, says nothing about sisters. <laughs> to reprove your brother when necessary, from Leviticus. To not embarrass others, from Leviticus. To not oppress the weak, to not slander, to not take revenge, to not bear a grudge. To teach the Torah to your children. To respect and defer to your elders. All of these are part of that 613, and believe me, there's a whole lot more, and they all come out of Scripture. These are what the people of Paul's time would know as sort of those rules of engagement, how to relate to one another. And they would then, if they didn't quite understand them, go to the rabbi, who would teach them what these are all about and how to kind of put them into practice. Because sometimes we need a little bit more of an explanation about how to understand Scripture. But they were all about living in relationship with God and with one another. But remember, if that's what people were following, all of a sudden Jesus comes along and flips everything on its head. Jesus was speaking into this experience of the Jewish people, but then helping them to understand what this new life would be like. And so Jesus summarized all 613 of these commandments with one very simple, yet practically very complex rule. Love one another. And that's the one you chose for me to speak about. So I'll do just that. Paul puts this exhortation to love one another into a context. Okay, He talks about the idea of debt. Now, that's something that I think many of us understand in this day and age because it's very difficult to go through life without at least some degree of debt. So here again, he says, oh, nothing, no, oh, no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. All of these come from that other set of commandments the Jewish people were familiar with, those 10 commandments. And they were all summed up, he says. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Because love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Now this text is used in many Christian communities to try to teach people not to have any sort of debt whatsoever. No credit card debt, no mortgage debt, no automobile debt. They adamantly teach Christians that we should not have debt of any kind which is fantastic in theory. But to carry it out is seemingly impossible. Anybody who is trying to go through university these days may know a little something about debt, as I hear laughter from our Carl scholars. <laughs> See, this would mean that I can't borrow a dollar from you to go buy myself a coat. It says you can't borrow any spoonful of sugar from anybody else. 
Nobody can lend anything else to one another. These are all very good things that happen, but yet they are also explanations about what is now called debt. So I think when we talk about this, Paul is not saying we can't have any kind of debt in any way, shape, or form. Mortgage debt, car debt, anything like that. When we look at scriptures, we'll notice that God makes allowances for lending in the nation of Israel. Exodus 22, Leviticus 25, God commands the practice of lending, but he says not to lend receiving interest. It's okay to lend to one another, but the people of God were not to charge interest to each other. So it's important to recognize that lending and borrowing was not condemned, but rather is also in Scripture. And it also talks about how if somebody has fallen into too much debt, it's supposed to be dealt with. God offers this idea of the year of Jubilee, when debts were forgiven. So God, based on Scripture, does not condemn debt. He authorized debt, but he explains how it is that we are expected to deal with it how to lend, and how to borrow. Jesus commands, do not turn away the one who wants to borrow from you. Matthew 5. If somebody needs a hand, we help the person out to lend them what they need. We also need to look at the context of what Paul is teaching in chapter 13. In verse 7, Paul is teaching to pay taxes that are owed. Obviously, Paul cannot be teaching that a Christian should never have debt if he's already admitting that Christians will have debt to the government. Pay what is owed, he says, to the governing authorities. This is what makes that logical connection to verse 8. Pay what you owe to the government, he says. In fact, pay what you owe to everybody. Pay what you owe to people. New International Version says this, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another, for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. So Paul's point is that any debt incurred must be repaid. He's basically saying pay what you owe. When we engage in borrowing, it must be paid back in full with the intention to pay back when we receive some sort of a loan. Paul says, though, that there is only one thing that we should pay back and that will never be done paying the debt of love. Paying back financial debts can be done. If you have ever heard of a mortgage burning that churches sometimes hold, they take a mortgage to build a building. Eventually, when it's paid off, sometimes they do a worship service where they literally burn the mortgage, turning back over to God. Churches, from time to time, do take on certain types of loans. That can come to an end. Once you've completely paid it off, if you've ever got a loan for a car, you've paid it off. You own that car. Once you have a mortgage, if you pay off that mortgage, you eventually do own that house. We can pay off our financial debts and be done, but the one debt that we can never completely finish paying off is the debt to love one another. Origen, a church father, says concerning the debt of love, we must pay it daily, yet always owe it. Loving each other is the fulfillment of the law. Paul says three times that love is the fulfillment of the law. Three times in three verses, Jesus taught that the commandments are summed up by loving others, by loving God, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Paul focuses on this second command because the command covers all of the obligations we have towards others. Love does no wrong others. Love does not commit adultery because it is a sin against others, violating the marriage covenant. Love does not murder because when we do so, we are violating human life. All of the commands that Paul mentions are summed up by this idea of loving one another. It's always shocking to me how people who claim to be Christians can do so much wrong and cause so much harm to other people. They clearly aren't paying close attention to the scripture. Paul wants to teach his followers that they don't need to follow those 613 commandments. They don't need to remember exactly what each one says and the impact it has on them. 
He's saying they don't need to go to the rabbi to find out exactly how to live out those 613 commandments. Because if you're trying to remember 613, you're probably forgetting 610. Because at the end of the day, it's not so easy to remember them all. Think back to the ones I shared earlier. Who remembers all of them? I'd have to go back and look. But at the end of the day, when we love one another, then we are doing what it is that we are called to be doing. LABC is not big on rules. But the one rule that I think we are committing ourselves to and that we need to continually recommit ourselves to is to love one another. If we're to look at each other despite all of our differences and recognize that we are each individual valued people of God, we owe it to God, the Creator, and we owe it to each other, the people who are redeemed, the people who are sustained, to love one another to care for the people, each of us, that God has placed in this time and in this place and in this world. So as we start a new year together, I don't want us to get a list of the 613 commandments and put it on a, on a, uh, well, that's a church, a flannel graph, <laughs> and list them all across the sides of the sanctuary, okay? But I do want us to be reminded of the one that we need to commit ourselves to today and each day, to love one another. Now, does that mean everything's going to be perfect? Nope. I wish it did, because that would make things a whole lot easier. There are going to be breaks. There are going to be fractures. But going back to what Becca said, we have a choice. We have a choice about whether we throw out each other when relationships break down, whether we're going to basically, literally, and figuratively put each other out to the side and say you're no longer part of this community when those kind of fractures take place, or we can commit to put each other back together and recognize that this, which is identified as those bonding agents, is the presence of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit, the one that is what holds us together even when we pray. Let's commit to love one another. Let's commit to work through challenges that we might face respectfully and lovingly. And let us be the people that God has created us to be in this time and place so that we can do so much more than we ever could have imagined. You've got a community of faith here, people who are committed to this neighborhood, to this community, and the ministries to which we've been called. Made above all else, be a ministry of love. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Come labor on. The words are printed in your order of service. Let's sing together.
me for our response of benediction and blessing. Just as God has called us here, God now sends us forth. Just as God has joined us here, God goes with us now. Go with the power of God to love and serve the world. Amen. Amen. Amen.